Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's talk about the spinning top. This is something that's still done in lots of places in the world where you have a top and you, you put a string around the very top and then you pull on the string and then the top spins and some of these tops will spin for a very long time, especially the real big ones. So let's say that the moment of inertia of the spinning top is 5 times 10 to the minus 3 kilogram times meters squared. We pull on the string with a force of 12 newtons. And what's amazing about it is we don't need to know the radius of this end of, of the spinning top because what we're going to do is we're going to pull with a force of 12 newtons for a distance of 1.5 meters. So that's the work done to make this top spin. The end result is that it will be spinning at some final omega, some final radial velocity, which we're trying to figure out. The way you solve this problem is that as any other problem where we have conservation of energy, we can say that the initial energy equals the final energy. Now the initial energy can come from three sources. It can come from any work put into the system, plus any initial potential energy you may have, plus any initial kinetic energy you may have. And that equals the final potential energy, plus the final kinetic energy, plus any heat lost if there's any friction. And in this case, we're going to ignore any heat loss due to friction. Notice the spinning top has a very small contact area with the ground, and there'll be very little friction loss there, so we can simply ignore that during the time that we get the, the top spinning. So we're going to call this zero heat loss. Notice that there's no potential energy in the beginning nor the end. There's no height gain. The top starts in this position, ends in this position. So there's no potential energy initially and no potential energy final. Also notice that initially when you start pulling on the top, the top will have no rotational speed and therefore there will be no kinetic energy initial. With other words, the whole problem ends up being the amount of work put into the system is equal to the final kinetic energy of the top. And of course, in this case, the kinetic energy will be only rotational kinetic energy. There's no translational speed involved here. The work done can be defined by the force times the distance equals one half i omega squared. And that will, of course, be the final omega squared. To solve for this, we can say that omega final square is equal to two times the force times the distance divided by, when we divide both sides by i, we get the moment of inertia here, which means, going over to this side of the board, that the omega final is equal to the square root of two times the force times the distance divided by the moment of inertia of this top. This is equal to the square root of two times the force applied is 12 newtons, the distance covered 1.5 meters, and the moment of inertia 5 times 10 to the minus 3 kilogram meters squared. So the final result then is omega final is equal to, for that we're going to need a calculator. That's 2 times 12 times 1.5 divided by 5 e to the 3 minus, and then you take the square root of that, and the rotational velocity, the angle velocity, will be 84.9, and of course that will be radians per second. So in essence, this is called the angular velocity, not 84.9 radians per second. If you want to know the rotational velocity, all we have to do is convert from radians to revolutions. So we have revolutions and radians at the bottom, and one revolution is 2 pi radians, so we divide this by 2 pi. And that gives us 13.5 revolutions per second. If you'd rather see the, the answer in revolutions per second rather than radians per second. And that's how it's done.